life. I totally get the benefit of amalgam being long-lasting when it's in my mouth, but I still had questions about whether low-level mercury release over years is going to make us ill. Could the chief executive of the British Dental Association reassure me? Do you accept that mercury is a toxin? Uh, yes. Do you accept that it goes into our bodies and it's released from amalgam fillings? Uh, well, there's no real evidence that, uh, that mercury does cause any problems in that way. The EC, their, their latest document says, the largest source of mercury exposure for most people in developed countries is inhalation of mercury vapour from dental amalgam. Mm -hmm. But you're saying it can't get into the body? Well, it says exposure to mercury vapour, and mercury vapour, whilst you're having fillings done, obviously there is mercury vapour around. What I'm saying to you is that the, the long lasting remaining residues of mercury aren't shown to, to, to be present in people's bodies. Right, but the actual vapour coming off the mercury filling, At the are, you time of the, are you saying the BDA situation is that can only happen when the filling is put in or the filling is removed? Yeah. So it can't happen when you brush, it can't happen when you chew. That's right. Yeah, but I mean, you've got to look at the quantities involved here and the significance of... of no, but you just told me it was zero. <laughs> OK. Well, is it la, zero la, la, or la, 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 la. Is it zero or not? No, I'm not, I'm not going to do this. If you're going to try and trap me, I'm not doing I'm it. I'm not trapping you. You told me that there was no... No, no. You told me that there was no mercury vapour released from an amalgam filling. No, I'm not doing this. You're not doing what? Answering the questions that we told you we were going to ask you? No, you, you didn't tell me you were going to do it that way. Do what? What way? No. I told you it was going to be about amalgam fillings. Yeah. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about the safety of amalgam fillings. And your answer is? No, I'll, I'll answer you serious questions if you're going to ask me That is a uh, serious you... question. No, all right, OK. OK, the question is... I was finding it hard to see why two important officials seem to want to play down the generally accepted fact that we get a constant low dose of mercury from our fillings. Surely that's the first step to understanding whether or not dental amalgam may cause harm. After some discussion, the chief executive of the BDA agreed to have another go at the question. Do you accept that mercury vapour is given off from your fillings? Uh, yes, in, in very, very small quantities. Okay. Do you think that's harmful? Um, none of the studies that we've seen have shown any connection at all with any of the very, very tiny amounts of mercury vapour that come from amalgam fillings on, on, on any systemic conditions. Mainstream dentists point to two major international studies looking at 500 children, which they say gave amalgam a clean bill of health. But our current potential exposure to mercury is a real worry for some regulators. Now remember these, an old school mercury thermometer and this is a blood pressure testing device. Now both of these were a staple on the NHS for many years and both contain mercury. But as from later this year, it will be illegal to market either of these. And that's part of an EU strategy to reduce our exposure to mercury. And there's also been another scientific controversy over the use of mercury, this time as a preservative in children's vaccines. It's no longer used in the UK, not because it's been proven to cause harm, but as a sensible health precaution. And it almost makes the, the decision on mercury fillings very difficult. If you said precaution for mercury within childhood vaccines, why not get rid of all mercury? Oh, absolutely. I think we should. And many other countries have done that, and it will happen here. There will be pressure from patients, from people who do not want to put this in their children's mouths or in their own mouth. So with all this scientific debate around dental amalgam, might it be a good idea to have a precautionary approach, the same as that now taken with vaccines? If that precautionary principle is good enough for childhood vaccines, why not extend it to the whole population? Because there is lots of evidence that, that the alternatives to amalgam in, uh, are A, in many cases, not as robust, and B, more technique sensitive, which means they would not last as long. Many who've had their amalgam fillings replaced say they feel better, even though there's no way of scientifically proving the mercury was to blame. But mum of 2K Cox needs no convincing. One of the main symptoms for me was extreme tiredness and everyone's tired when they've got two young children so that didn't, uh, you know, it's just something you live with and you live with it and you live with it and, um, and then I guess I began to think, no, this is ridiculously tiring.
tired. So I began to get things, you know, a couple of complimentary treatments and things, and it wasn't really taking me anywhere until I found out about the mercury. Uh, and then I began, it just, it just made sense. It just clicked. Here's one of the most toxic substances in the world, and we're putting it in our mouths. Why? Kay had all her amalgam fillings removed four years ago and says she now feels re-energised. I began to feel lighter and to be able to sort of uh, run about a lot more and, and be able to carry on with all the things that needed to be done and work harder and everything. But just feeling better, just feeling more well. While holding down a full-time job, Kay says she's now able to enjoy a truly active life with her gymnastics mad children. I have more energy and that's better for all of the family. I'm less stressed and less stroppy and uh, that's good for them. Anecdotally, you meet people and they say, I feel tons better since I've had all my mercury fillings removed. Yes, absolutely. And I think one of the most significant impacts on people's consciousness is worry. And if people worry that something is bothering them and they have it, have it dealt with, even if it may not have been the cause of what they were concerned about, they will feel better because the worry's gone. But Kay Cox rejects the idea she was simply fretting about her health without real cause. It's not in my mind. I didn't imagine it. It is actually physically different. Everything is physically different. I have more vitality. I feel more like myself. I have the energy to do everything that I need to do. And that's not your imagination. It's really not. And some believe the potential health effects of low-level mercury exposure can be even more serious. Author Terry Pratchett is living with early-onset Alzheimer's disease. Although there's no conclusive scientific proof, he believes his mercury fillings may have contributed to his illness. It's now about nine months since I had the amalgams removed. I don't... Do I feel better? I'm talking to you guys. I've got here today. I've just been having an interview with the Prime Minister. Things are going well. For me, it was a no-brainer. Having something like mercury in your mouth, um, no matter what the small print said, seemed to me to be a really bad idea. And since I could afford it, I got rid of the stuff. I asked the dentist if he could give me the amalgam fillings that he'd taken out of my mouth so that I could give them to a, a friend of mine to make for me the most expensive pair of cufflinks that I would ever own. He said, sorry, can't do that, they're toxic waste, I put them in the toxic waste bin. I said, but they were in my mouth. He said, yes, and now they're in the toxic waste bin. So somehow, you know, I thought, Possibly that was money well spent. <laughs> if there was any evidence to show a link, then obviously, you know, we would need to act on that. But as far as I'm aware, there's no published evidence, you know, which in a peer-reviewed document, which actually supports that argument. The Alzheimer's Research...